Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation. This is uh, Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching the latest series on ISTQB Foundation. Uh, this is 2018 and the very first tutorial of this series. Uh, this is the syllabus which is recently modified. So hereafter on this particular series you will be watching the tutorial on the latest version of ISTQB Foundation which was modified recently in this month, June 2019. So the very first thing what we are getting started with is the first chapter and the very first topic of it that is fundamental of testing. And we have five topics to understand in this chapter. What is testing? Why is testing necessary? Seven testing principles, uh, the test process, and the psychology of testing. So this remains similar to what we have done, but the, some minor changes have taken place. The test process has been a little bit modified. The principal names have been modified. So let's quickly look into that, what we are starting with today. So for each topic, we'll be having a unique tutorial. I'm not going to merge everything together. So 1.1, what is testing is the agenda for this tutorial. Let's get into that. When you talk about what is testing, of course, uh, we have got several definitions to it that, you know, it might be about meeting the requirements, it might be about, uh, you know, finding the defects and what. So there's a lot, many things to understand about testing, isn't it? Now, when you say about what is testing exactly, people have different intuitions about testing, that it is just limited to executing certain test cases, that you write test cases, prepare them, execute them, log the result, and uh, that's all is about testing. Now... We have got a more things to do. Now, generally, there's a big life cycle on testing as well, where the testing starts with uh, right from the static techniques, uh, when it begins uh, during the document gathering or any such work product which is being prepared within the life cycle. And we try to gather as much information as possible. And we start in involving the test engineers right from the requirement phase. And we try to uh, you know, ask them to review the documentation if we can find the defects at an early stage, which will also help you to prevent defects from being introduced into the defect and the code. So it's just not limited to execution of the test cases, but we do have many other activities what we are going to understand throughout this particular series one after the other. So there will be a lot of minute things which will be coming one after the other and uh, you know, telling you that what exactly it is. So we do have many other activities than test execution of where testers get involved and contribute in terms of evaluating the requirements or enhancing the quality of the system. The major objectives of what is testing includes uh, the finding defects, gaining confidence about the quality, providing information, and preventing defects. So generally this means that testing is all about finding as many defects as possible before release so that we can deliver a quality product to the end user or to the client. So generally by writing test cases, executing test cases, we try to make sure that we try to find as many defects as possible, conducting as many failures as possible before we can really call the customer and say, hey, your product is ready. The another thing is about gaining the confidence, being the testing team as you interact with a lot of possible scenarios, a lot of typical test cases, and you find defects, you are the one who is the first person to gain confidence about the quality of the product. Until unless the testing team really has the confidence that we are okay to proceed ahead with the release, we will not take it as granted. So we always seek certain time, additional time to continue further testing because of course if the testing team says that we have not covered certain critical areas which involves highly severe risk, then of course you cannot go ahead with taking the chance of failing the product in the market. Because if the product fails in the market, it might be huge in terms of impact, maybe claiming a lot of uh, money in terms of human lives or maybe the business loss as well. So you do not take such risk in the market. Providing information generally to uh, give information to the uh, other management and stakeholder members to make decisions about the release. So generally, it's again the testing team who contributes uh, in terms of providing the progress on the project, that how much testing has been done so far, what typical defects we have found, and how much more is required to be done. So we consistently provide information to the management about decision making and the other stakeholders about the quality of the system.
preventing defects of course uh, in terms of uh, uh, giving more information in terms of review uh, getting involved at an early stage we testers can provide a lot of defects at an early stage so finding defects at an early stage may help you to minimize your defects and generally help you to you know capture a lot of information as well to evaluate the work product is the one way by which you conduct static testing and generally try to find out as many defects as possible in the work product initially before it can be used for the code. To verify if all the requirements have been met, of course, this is the base uh, objective of the testing, where generally we say that throughout the testing as we work with the techniques, uh, we just try to make sure that the requirements have been met. Because at the end, what the customer would be interested in is having all these requirements met by the development organization. To a certain extent, we also try to reduce the level of risk. Generally, what risk we have identified, we try to cover them as much as possible with our tests and try to encounter them, mitigate them before it can reach the market. So about the risk, we'll talk in more detail when it comes to Chapter 5 because right now we do not have much details on that and we don't want to explore it as of now to confuse you with what exactly is risk all of a sudden it comes into picture so you really don't take a chance for that so we will be talking about it in more detail when we come to the level or the detail of risk in chapter 5. Of course, testing may also be required to meet the legal, contractual, regulatory requirements or maybe the standards even. So generally we put them into the business requirements or any special requirements in terms of acceptance. It might be about the contract, it might be about the legal uh, obligations or regulatory standards or any such standards which is to be supposed to be taken care. Maybe in terms of usability, W3 uh, standards uh, like, you know, your protocols of uh, web-based applications or even sometime it is a safety critical system then you take care of regulatory requirements as well so testing is not just limited to the functional requirements we may have a lot of other things to be taken care of as a part of it so testing deals with many other things just simply executing the test cases is not testing other than that of course i'm just introducing you to what exactly testing classification is we have a lot of myth about differentiation in the types of testing. Some people say testing is of two types, white box, black box, manual automation. No, we have testing as types of static and dynamic, where static testing is to deal with static work products. Any such document which is created as a part of the testing lifecycle and uh, you test it without executing it, you call it as static testing. Whereas dynamic testing deals with execution of the application. So if you talk about requirements, you talk about design, you talk about control flow, workflow, flowcharts, algorithms, these are static objects where these are non-executable. But we say that testers uh, are the very valued contributors and they help you find defects at an early stage in these static documents. By doing this, we can find defects at an early stage which help you uh, save a lot of time, a lot of cost, a lot of rolling back actions in the entire life cycle. Once static is done, these documents will be used for deriving test cases for the levels of testing. And that execution of those test cases are called as dynamic testing, which is done by executing the application. So generally we uh, call it as the process of conducting static testing as review, or even to a certain extent we conduct static analysis. Whereas for dynamic testing, we call it as levels of testing. So levels of testing in the sense like, you know, unit integration system and acceptance. So here are the types of reviews. We have four different types of review, informal review, walkthrough, technical review, inspection. And on the other side, we have levels of testing like unit integration system, UAT, and any other non-functional testing. So generally, it all deals with uh, these information. Beyond that, we'll be talking in more details about uh, the types and classification in Chapter 2. So basically, the classification includes Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. But uh, here we have one more topic to discuss in this section, that is debugging and testing. Generally, people think that debugging and testing are same, but they are not. Debugging and testing are relatively different than each other. When you talk about testing, testing is an event or activity which generally helps you to find defect. 
by executing a particular test, conducting a failure on the application, you try to find as many defects as possible. But a testers or testing process does not deal with fixing the defect. And the fixing defect part goes to debugging. Where debugging means it's uh, when the defect is being reported, developers understand what defect has been reported, get into the details of that by analyzing the defect, find out the root cause why exactly the defect was caused, and then remove the cause of defect. So generally, uh, de debugging deals with three major activities, analyzing the reporting defect, finding the root cause analysis, or of course, removing the cause of the defect. And these are generally performed by a developer. So there is a difference when you say testing and debugging. Testing just deals with finding defects, debugging analyzes, uh, finds the root cause, and fix the cause of defect. So generally, you do, uh, if you get into the detail of testing and say that what if we do automation testing, we also debug. But deem that is automation testing. Automation testing does not deal with general testing process. It's a specialized step. So until unless you are asked about automation testing, you do not talk about debugging. But generally, when you have to answer testing and debugging together, you just say debugging is something which is to fix the defects, whereas testing is to find the defects. So I think that's all from this tutorial team. Uh, it was really interesting having this chapter uh, being discussed today. Uh, I'm really excited about this series. So this was the first tutorial on the first chapter. Stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial and we'll be having another topic to be considered for the next one. So we have why testing is important in the next tutorial. If you, In case you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for the notifications. Until then, keep learning, keep exploring. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.